Welcome back to Brussels, my love. I'm Maeve McMahon and along with my guests, we're just taking a look back at the stories of the week. And one that made us turn was this. Activists from Just Stop Oil spraying Stonehenge, the prehistoric megalithic structure in southern England that attracts tourists from all across the globe. A day later, the same group tried to target the jet of the pop star Taylor Swift in Stansted Airport to call her out for her carbon footprint. Turned out seemingly to be the wrong jet, but regardless of the facts, the images have pretty much gone viral in the past few weeks. So I want to ask my panel, do they think they're heroes or vandals there? Connor, let's start with you. Neither heroes nor vandals, but criminals. Um, the, the outright vandalism they wreaked upon Stonehenge, it actually affected me quite emotionally. These people, they do not have any consensus in society. They haven't built up any political consensus uh, for their arguments. And when faced with their own weaknesses and their own ability to create arguments, they sidestep our democracy and instead quite arrogantly try to tell us what to do. And the worst thing about it is it's completely subjective. If this is a group of conservatives or libertarians or neo-Nazis doing exactly the same thing, they'll be the first to condemn it. You look horrified <laughs> by what you're hearing now, Adelaide. It's, it's what's the role of activists, right? It's not to bring consensus. This is not their, this is not their goal. The reason why I'm an activist today and the reason why young people are around the table and debates today is because we have skipped school. And the day I skipped school, I swear, the entire world were, was really mad at students for doing so. It was unacceptable. And today, of course, we have to question the role of the way we do it. But they have tried everything. They are bringing back, the main goal is bringing back the subject on the table, which is happening right now. But don't right? you think it hurts then it us bits, in the long run in I, terms of gathering support for the policy? Because the, the goal is not gathering support here with those actions. I mean, gathering they, support would be the moment where we bring people in the streets. Well, let's hear from the, the horse's mouth because we actually spoke to Adrian Johnson. He's the spokesperson uh, for Just Stop Oil. Take a listen. Andy Weir in his 2011 novel The Martian opens with these famous lines. I'm practically fucked. That's my considered opinion fucked. Now, his character says that because he's stuck on Mars, there's no soil, there's limited food, he knows he's going to starve to death. We are heading the same way. I have two grandchildren and by 2050, they will be 30 years old. I don't want them to be fighting wars over water and food. Our plan is to escalate, to intensify. Our government can basically call off all of our actions with the stroke of a pen by committing to sign an international legally binding treaty to end all extraction and burning all fossil fuels by 2030. So Adrian Johnson there uh, not mincing his words from Just Stop Oil, saying he's doing this for his grandkids. No, and I completely agree, I have to say, where this is coming from when people lock themselves to the road or spray jets. Uh, and also Fridays for Future was central in gathering support for the Green Deal. But I would say now we need to convince instead of antagonize. We saw the results of the Greens at the last election that when you don't have citizens on board, you actually cannot implement policies. Do you know the window of Overton? This is a, a theory of change. We all have different theories of change around the table. This one is saying we have to take a leadership. They, they, they are the ones who will bring this subject where we're like, guys, this is too much. This is too much. But tomorrow, if we can be 10,000 in the streets of Brussels in front of the community, demanding exactly the same thing, people will say, okay, that I support, but I don't support this. And they are moving the window of Overton so that we can make sure that at some point it's acceptable to hear that whatever is happening, whatever, how we take actions with activism, what we need is actually climate action. Well, the only difference is that you support that, though. If this was a group of neo-Nazis painting the Eiffel Tower white, the it was not that they're different. different. They think it's... they're right and you think they're right. The moment you step outside the bounds of society and the moment you step outside the mechanisms of democratic change that we have built up over hundreds of years of struggle, you lose all eligibility. Well, that brings this, con this conversation to an end. As we heard there from Just Stop Oil, they're not going anywhere, so get used to them. <laughs> um, and we'll be reporting it all here on Brussels, my love. Thank you so much to Adelaide Charlier, Connor Allen and Julianne Pardy for being our guests this weekend. And thank you so much for watching. Reach out. Brussels, my love at euronews.com is our email address. Take care and see you soon.